So I ask you to join me in a moment of prayer. Lord, we pray that you will now speak to your people, either through me or in spite of me. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm going to start out um, that the prayers notwithstanding uh, with, a, with a slight disclaimer. Um, <clears throat> I had a weird thing happen uh, on Friday. I don't know if you've ever gotten vertigo before. I never had. Holy cow. So, um, so uh, my, my sermon prep time on Friday and Saturday yesterday um, <laughs> were badly uh, impacted. So this might seem, I hope, it won't seem too much disjointed, but, um, but uh, it's not quite as refined as I would usually like it to be. But, you know, that may be okay. Um, I hope so. Um, the, the scripture that we just read, um, I... I don't know if it was shared last week, but um, last week in, in the church I attended, um, the focus was on Jesus' baptism. Yes, yeah, so good. Heads are nodding. And so uh, this, this uh, is a continuation of that story. And, you know, the, uh, the, the, the big question I think that we always have is, is in this, this challenge of recognition. You know, how do we know, how do we know that if the thing is so, Can you imagine being one of the people in, in today's scripture? The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And you put yourself in that picture. You're one of these, these people over here in the foreground. And, uh, and, and somebody stands up and, and, and says something like that. What would you be doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> At least uh, some of us might be saying, eh, you know, there's lots of false prophets around, right? And lots of claims of, you know, this and that and the other thing. And, you know, and uh, but John stands up. Here's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Wow. And, and, uh, and, and then it, it goes on from there. John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. Well, you know, I, I think we might envy John. Because as, as um, the Apostle John explains it in, in the text, um, John the Baptist, the baptizer, he got some important clues and, and clear messages from God to help, help him recognize Jesus. You know, all the time I'm sort of praying, you know, for, can you send me an email? <laughs> or, 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 you know, a Facebook messenger or a text or something, you know, just, yeah, so I can really know, so I can really know. And, um, you know, at least in, in 2020, God is, as I experienced, God doesn't work exactly like that. <laughs> you know, he lets us wrestle with the mystery. Um, so, so, you know, so we struggle with this question, you know, how, how can we know what is the evidence? And, of course, in a, in a scientific era, as we are, you know, it's all about the data, right? All about the evidence. Um, we still have arguments, you know, is is uh, are, do, do, are humans contributing to climate change or not? And, you know, all these scientists, 90% of the scientists say, yeah, and oh, but there's over people over here. You know, if you spend any time on Facebook, you'll say, oh, no, the data doesn't show that. The data shows some craziness. So how can we know? You know, what is the evidence? And in the church that I was in last week, it was the uh, Presbyterian uh, Community Church in, in St. Helena. And, you know, normally I... I uh, my wife and I attend the Methodist Church in St. Helena. We have a pretty long history there. But um, through a set of circumstances, a friend, she's in the choir, and she really wanted you know, us to come. And, and you know, God works in mysterious ways, right? <laughs> so I didn't come there to hear the preacher. I didn't, you know, you know and, and I, you know, I don't mind hanging out with those Presbyterian people too much. But, you know, but, <laughs> but, but normally, I'm, I'm doing the Methodist thing, you know, just like you are this morning. You have other options, right? But you're here. And uh, we could have a whole long talk about that. But, you know. but so I was in the place where 
um, I got to think about something really important that has to do with this, um, this question of you know, how can we know? What is, what is the evidence? Uh, so the, the pastor, he said, well, what if he was talking about baptism and how baptism is, is a sign of relationship with God? And, and he was um, putting forth the argument that, that that relationship should be manifest or evident in, in how we live our lives. So he said, well, you, so, so what if somebody followed you around for, for a week, you know, did one of those like YouTube videos, you know, going around and, 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 just didn't, and watched you interacting, I don't know, with your, with your partner, with you know, people in the grocery store who maybe butt into line ahead of you and, or, or out on the road, you know, just like, and he asked, you know, if you were accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict? If you were accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict? Now that's an interesting question. And we could, we could talk about that a lot, but you know, I got a lot of ground that I want to cover today. So, so but, but for me, for me, you know, what that talks about is, is something that um, is one of, one of the best lessons I ever learned um, it, 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 from a movie. And, and, and I think there are lots of good lessons in a movie, but you know, I think many of us have seen the movie Forrest Gump. And, and in that movie, his mother, he has a special relationship with his mother, very precious, and his mother teaches him this lesson, love is as love does. Love is as love does. So, so when we put on our you know, glasses you know, to try and see clearly how our faith is working in our life, you know, for me, one of the things that seems right at the top of the list, you know, the evidence of, of, of my faith is, you know, what kind of love do I share? What kind of love do I show? What kind of love do I convey, convey through the words that come out of my mouth, through, through the actions that I take, and, and then the secret stuff, right? <laughs> what, what if there was this little TV screen over top of my head, and all of our heads, right? So I'm having this conversation with this person, and, you know, and, and I'm thinking, oh man, when is she gonna stop talking? You know, so I, got, I got all this stuff to do. You know, we don't want that stuff to be out there, right? So, so our, 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 not just our speech and our actions, but what's going on inside as we get quiet and we get reflective? You know, what, do we see evidence of, of love happening? And, and that, for me, um, leads to um, you know, some reflection about Dr. Martin Luther King. We could spend you know, probably the rest of the day talking about you know, the history of, of his life and, and, and how uh, he felt himself Led, I, mean, I would think he, he would sometimes say dragged kicking and screaming by God to teach some really important lessons to people who desperately needed to hear those lessons. And those lessons were really fundamentally, in my mind, about love, about learning to love. And, and not just learning to love, you know, those who are like us or those who agree with us, but those who we might perceive as being really radically different from us. Love is as love does. And, and I just want to share, you know, of all the incredible things that um, Dr. King shared with us. You know, for me, uh, and, and I think many of you will be familiar with this, this, this quote just seems like... Uh, an incredibly important abiding principle. And, and it's, it's based on scripture. Um, because as Malcolm, Malcolm said, you know, he was a preacher. He was a preacher. So, um, so he said this, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Hate multiplies hate. 
Violence multiplies violence and toughness multiplies toughness in the descending spiral of destruction. The chain reaction of evil, hate, begetting hate, wars, producing more wars, must be broken. Or we shall be plunged into the dark abyss of annihilation. Heads are nodding. We recognize the truth of that, don't we? We recognize the truth of that. And yet, you know, if we look at, you know, the headlines, the stuff going on in our world today, oh man, you know, it's like we can't quite get it. If we, you know, spend any time uh, having political discussions on, on Facebook, <laughs> we forget that in a heartbeat. Sometimes when we're in relationship with someone that, that we officially, according to, you know, maybe a ring on our finger or whatever, we forget it, don't we? Because that person does something that we really don't like, and we, yeah, we struggle to do that. We struggle to let you know, love really be the guiding principle of our lives. 